Crikey, look at this fella. I haven't seen one of these in years. It's still operational. Well, maybe it's not, that's why we're here. So the store called in that the leak detector is alarming. You got the faults. These old RLDSs, uh, twos used to be all over the place back in the day when they started like in 04, but they've been going away slowly. So here you see all the tubes going out to the cell floor in the cases, the walk-ins, the machine room, the racks, wherever they usually have it. So right now I'm just trying to see if anything visually is uh, wrong right now. I'm right now feeling the pump, looking to see if any wires are loose, anything that's just obvious right now. Nothing too bad. I mean the solenoids on the side nothing loose here you got the filter right there which looks pretty clean so I don't think it's been working for a while but the only way to get into these RLDS is, is you have to find the gateway card which is usually on the panel next to it it's almost like a 5 by 3 inch board and on this one they have it right there on the top so this is the gateway card that you have to plug into with this handheld you need one of these handhelds so on the left you have the newer style handheld on the right is the older one they still work so look at that beautiful old thing still going so yeah I'm gonna use uh, the newer style one right here so this handheld can get into pretty much anything that's a uh, ECPC or E2 board you just plug it in and you can see anything from it beautiful thing look at it it's been with me for a while so now I gotta connect to it. I'm just gonna grab it and put it into the phone jack and connect inside of it and see what's going on. So once you connect to it, it'll light up. So right now, RLDS, press down. There's only one in online, so it says enabled, one, yes. Now it's gonna take a little bit to read it. It's just gathering all the information from the RLDS, trying to connect to it. 12 seconds later. Any second now. Alright, ah, so now we're in. So you have the three options. The status, the faults, and configuration. So right now I'm trying to see the faults. Number two. Go down. And these are my faults. Zone flow, purge flow, no flow. So right now to check everything. Make sure none of the flow is getting disrupted right now. Nothing pinch or loose on the outside, the 16 zones, the inline filter, my vinyl coming in. I'm just looking for anything that's going to disrupt the flow for the entire thing. The inline filter looks pretty new. Right direction. It's too clean. These are usually a little bit dirty. Making sure going into the processing board good. Yeah, nothing pinched right there. Into the sensor element. Coming now, fine. Just looking for anything just loose or pinched before it goes into the pump right here. Nothing really pinched off that would be cutting out the circulation. The pump's being held by the four bolts in the bottom, which I already took off so I can move it around and inspect it more. It's just 120 volts to that plug to the board. Let me move it around so you can look at the info. There you go, 115. These usually go bad a lot, so this is probably going to be my culprit. Take it off, see if I can feel any kind of suction that's being pumped in. It's on right now, but I don't hear it sucking in right now. Nothing. That is a little vacuum sound you usually hear. So I think this pump is pretty much done for. Now the problem is these things are so old, are they going to try to fix this pump or just go to the newer style ones? Now you just have MRLDS sensors that are just tiny and just fit in racks and the cases like this one. So to the left is a newer style one. You can actually adjust everything on the screen, what kind of gas. And on the right it's the older one that you in the controller and the E2 you program it to whatever you want. So these new style sensors are pretty much replacing this whole RLDS. So now does the customer want to replace the pump or go to the newer style ones? Pretty much up to them. All we can do is give them the option and the quote, see what they want to do. 
So on the walk-ins, you can see here's a filter in the bottom. The vinyl tubing going up to the RLDS in the back. So pretty much in all the walk-ins, this is going to look with these sensors in the bottom. They get dirty from time to time, but you clean them. So this one's in the freezer right here. This one's in the meat prep room. These usually get wet when they wash the floors. That's why it's kind of a medium high. A little bit closer inspection. Every filter is a different color, white, blue, but pretty much just going all the way protected. Except for this one. It looks like this one got ripped out and the filter's gone. It's just a vinyl tubing. Now to talk more about the handheld. So any CPC to board you can connect to it with the handheld. You see the phone jack there. If it has that, you can just plug it in and see everything. So instead of going to the E2 to look up stuff, you just plug in your handheld. And check out the information. So this is AI number two, board number two. So you can see the addressing. No, baud rate's correct. So you can see the AIs or the ROs, whatever you want to see. So let's just go to the ROs. And you can bypass ROs right there. You want to turn on a compressor or anything. You can do it right there from the handheld. Do a little arrow on and off, but I'm not going to do it right now. It's the lighting board, so I don't want to mess with it. Don't want out there all the case lights going off. And check number the AIs. One. Just check real quick. I think it was number three. Yep, the temp sensors. So pretty much one through three is for temperature, for its pulse. You can change it to whatever you want on the handheld. So you don't have to go all the way to the E2. A lot of fun things you can do with the handheld. Saves you a lot of time. I have about three of them. So if I ever do hit 1K, I'll just give one away. <laughs> the 1K giveaway. But uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Today's call is just bad pump. Want to see if the customer wants to do with it. Go new style or keep the old one alive. But those new MRL DSs are like a thousand dollars each sensor. So for one for the rack and each uh, walk-in, it's gonna be kind of pricey. So they might keep that pump alive. But hey, it ultimately it's up to them at the end. And that's the end of the video. So if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Hit the like if you enjoyed the video, and thanks so much for watching.